Hi, Amanda. Severe Weather Week Awareness Week is uh, right now, right? It sure is, and we are focusing on a different topic every single day. Yesterday we talked about lightning. Today we're talking about marine and beach hazards. Obviously a big deal for our area, right? A lot of people move here just for our wonderful beaches that we do have. I'm going to focus on the marine hazards first because we've all been there, right? You take the boat offshore, you're going fishing, it's flat calm, we've got clear skies, and then all of a sudden this is chasing you in or out depending on the day, right? Yeah, so there are a couple of ways that you can avoid this. Obviously, look at the forecast for those rain chances, but in the summertime, rain chances are in the forecast every single day. Doesn't mean those storms are always going to push offshore. So what you can do as a as opposed to just looking at the wind speeds for those sea heights, you can actually look at the wind direction and focus on those afternoon sea breezes, whether they're going to push offshore or the sea breeze is going to push inland that day. Obviously, you want to boat on those days that the sea breeze is going to push farther inland as opposed to those storms pushing offshore, so you can avoid a situation like this. So that's your marine hazards, but if you're going to head to the beach, there's a lot of different things that you can look for as well. Look for the flags near the lifeguard stands. There are a lot of different colors and they each indicate a different hazard. For example, a purple flag means that there's hazardous marine life in the area, maybe jellyfish that are uh, in the water that the lifeguard has spotted. So yeah, always swim near those lifeguard stands because they're on the lookout for that at all times. You don't want to swim near piers and jetties because a lot of times, well, there's bigger marine life near those where people are fishing, but rip currents form near piers and jetties. They can form on sunny days. They're hard to detect as well. Coming up in our next half hour, I'm going to explain what a rip current is and how to get out of it if you find yourself caught in one. Guys. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Amanda. Mm -hmm. We'll see you then. Yep.